So it's at this point now that, you know, we've met Isa and then we meet Big Pin and then we meet uh, Habib and, oh, who's Habib? Okay, so there's this group. Oh, wait, and then of course, there's Musa from high school. Oh, okay. He's the guy I remember. <laughs> keep and I'm like, Musa. yo, yo, Musa, man. Like, what the hell, man? Dude, you just blew up and became something else. Uh, but K-Rap star was just starting to rise. They, they still were saving, they were still saving, they were still saving the big stuff for the next show. And no, but what I, I found hearing, out, uh, huh? K-Rap was independent. He was, we so, didn't know that. So yeah, like when us we had, because it was under Ugopa, we yeah. assumed that was, He's part of the family. Yeah. But Kira, and then of course the song now that he did with Big Pin and, and Isa. But do you remember the song before that? Which one? With the, featuring that chick. Ogopa. Ogopa. The realest. The song was called The Realest. Hey, 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 oh gosh. By Kira. <laughs> and the reason why it he had such a strong association with Ogopa was because that song, that word was there. Yes. Ogopa. Ogopa. This song was called The Realist. Yeah. But anyway, by I'll meeting, just say, yeah. also go watch Big Pin's interview. It kind of paints a picture of the recording side with Issa. With, with, yeah, 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 that was a good episode. So, uh, so we meet Big Pin, and then we meet these other two guys. Uh, a guy called Thome, a guy called Safari. And these guys were... When, when, you, hear, when you hear Issa calling out shouts, at the last bit of Joe. When you met him in person, you realize that's who he was. He was a guy of bigging up his people everywhere. So, it's until be like Kama Safari, you had a with the hand is Joe. Oh. And he mentions Thome in another song. So he used to actually big up Those his people. Those are his people. boys. Those are his boys. That was his crew. So you, you meet Habib, and then you meet Manga, and you realize these are the Buccaneers. And then you meet pirates, and the pirates is k and and uh, Big Pin. Yeah. And they're really trying to form this unit. Like, that's what Isa really wanted to do. Like, he wanted to big up his people. He wanted to take all his people together. So I remember having a conversation with him and asking him, well, dude, that Leonie Leo song, because I was in love with that song. And I asked him, dude, did you actually do that third verse in one take, in one breath? And he says, yep. And I'm like, okay, can you do it for us now? And he's like, yep go and he's like excuse me what a, bon, uh, excuse me bona wataka kutu wana mazishi plan ni kuja wait at it at the zambuka na kama kawaida mbili mbili zambuka za maki ya banye kutembeta fikri ya na you know he really ah jina langu ni isa i have i've decimated it <laughs> excuse me bona wataka kutu wana mazishi plan ni kuja wait at it at the zambuka na kama kawaida mbili mbili zambuka za maki ya banye kutembeta fikri ya na you know he really ah jina langu ni isa mimi wana ni ita amina jina lako ni me but we're like dude you can actually do it like you are really a lyrical genius genius now the upside of that was every so often my sis would come home with a cd or yvonne would come home with a cd and it would have a lot of incomplete tracks Ay, demo yeah, yeah, tracks yeah, 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 yeah. and they'd be like this is a new one from big pin big pin yank to the beat move to the beat but they were very raw yes so they were never really they, like yeah. ah, i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know and then we had that other song that now brought together these guys south sea's finest bamba now this was the second time that i accompanied um eric to an Ogopa event because they had a <laughs> whole new bunch of songs yes and we're like what on earth is going on now this one the curtain raiser was this guy called k -Rapt. He was one who performed. No, no, no. Actually, the first song was I, I, I'll never let you down. So k comes on and performs Twende to Kawake. And we are like, okay, this is a good song. People are responding a lot to the songs that they knew. Isa comes on and does his thing. Bigfoot comes on and does his thing. Now they come on and do their thing together. 
and we had that song and we were like this is madness now and it was again again south sea's finest who walk kakilo zangu matuta pamba isa and they're doing this and guys are going crazy and um Nani, what's his name? Uh, K-Raps was trying a Bonnie and Clyde. Remember that song, Bonnie and Shine, Bonnie and Shine? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he was saying, and in between, he was ad-libbing with And we're like, what are you doing? This stuff sounds so cool. And it's like madness. Um, these guys came on stage i think kleptomaniacs managed to come up on stage this time and then now all this music was just released so between ogopa 1 and 2 the music that we really associate with ogopa djs in those all of this happened in the, about three months and we were going ape shit like <laughs> this sound like we yep. liked our k Souths and our kalamashakas and whatever yep. but this is now this is new this is now this is this can be jumped to by anyone. Yep. Anyone yep. across yep. in any neighborhood across whatever age. And we, we start hanging out with Isa more and more and it's getting and I'm like really fascinated by this dude and um and he tells us he's going to be releasing an album. And his album is called Dimefika and and he's going to be working on the songs and and we're like yo this is so cool. And we're still listening to demos of songs. So we have a demo called Siosare and he says, yo, I'm going to be shooting my video at mobile on Sunday night. And I ask my sister, yo, are you going? Yeah, is Ivan going? Of course she's going. Can I come along? And she's like, yeah. So we go to the No way, of... no way. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I was at mobile when they were shooting Siosare. I was there. I'll never forget because a music video was still not a thing. Yeah, yeah. To see a camera and someone rapping into the camera and they're shooting a video. What? Superstar. So I'm telling you, dude, there were celebrities at the music video shoot. I think I saw Modoni. We were there. I saw a couple other people there. Oh, and remember, he'd bigged up Modoni. Yes. In Joe. Yeah. a kiss. Bila Modoni. So Modoni was a fan already. Like how she was born a fan. So she was there at the shoot. And everyone was acting all like, I'm cool, I'm what, and everyone was all, the air was of, mm, well, the cool shit, you know, we're here for a music video. And I was really uncomfortable because I didn't know anyone and everyone was acting all. Do you know the one person who you'd never have thought was shooting a music video? Uh. Isa. He was so easy. When he came, he was like, guys, what's up, man? Thank you for being here. Nini, nini. And suddenly the mood went from everyone being all, yeah, I'm cool to, hey, this is a party. And the guys who were doing his video were called Orange something, I can't remember. But I remember the dudes. I, I, anyway, there were, there were guys there with their two cameras and they were using car lights for light. They didn't have their own lighting setup yep. or whatever. And all they were doing was shooting Issa as he was dancing, as he was arriving on the parking lot. And they had all these cars shining on him and cars shining lights behind him. And they filmed him just doing all these two dance styles. And then a few dance styles with so Nameless. So that is mobile mat? Yeah, uh, it's the parking lot. The mobile of South Sea. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't the know The bit that. where you see with the cars. Yes. And him doing those two dances. I always thought it was the car park at in Westy. No, no, JK no. is that kind of place. Come back to it, wasn't nah, it? that was South Sea, dude. Okay. That was Bellevue. That was the mobile Bellevue. Till I see what's inside Girl, it's no lie The way you shake your behind I'm about to lose my mind Pick up the remote and rewind To my car, please jump inside From your friends, I'll show you where we can hide In the midst of the pirates You can have anything you want Sare We got it from the back to the front Sare Mi nama beste nani agare Sare Masi kitu lazima ahanwe Sare Kagoma leo lazima 
And then when everything was over and they got all the footage that they were going to take, and this is the thing I always found so interesting about Isa was how easy he was. Um, when I was driving my mom's car, so I'm there with my sister and I'm like, it's time to go home. Um, does Isa have a ride? And she was like, I actually don't know. Um, so Yvonne is in the ride with us, so probably Isa will ride with us. So we go to Isa and I was like, Isa, do you have a ride? And he's like, actually no. Who did you come with? Oh, I came with some other guys, but it looks like the car is full. So do you want a space in our car? And he's like, sure. And that ride between Mobile into Halai was so cool. I was like, yo, man, I'm riding with Isa. Like, what? Isa has told me happy birthday. We're having Ninis. He's performed for us that covers in Leo Leo. Now we're at his music video, and I'm dropping him home from his music video. Shit, man. <laughs> But I was still a Christian, so I was playing soldiers in the car. Soldiers, <laughs> soldiers. And I was playing a song called All Around the World or whatever. Because I really wanted to hear if he was going to... Oh, this is another thing we discovered about Isa. Isa loved music. Mm. Isa had such an ear. So in the middle of a conversation, he's listening to music and he's like, Yo, who are these guys? And he's like, and I said, they're called soldiers. And he's like, it sounds like gospel. And I'm like, yeah, it is. It's gospel, hip hop. Yeah, but you know, um, I, I don't know if this is an indictment. <laughs> Because I don't know if he was looking at me like, are you one of those Christian people yeah. who do the whole gospel thing? But turns out it wasn't really a big deal. And this guy continued working on his album. And even my mom met him. And the first thing my mom says when she meets him, he's like, this is the guy that made those songs playing on the radio. And I'm like, yeah, can you believe it? Because he's, 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 you know, he was a short dude. Yeah. Very unassuming, very easy. Very, you know, life is for the living. Let's be joyous. Let's be respectful of each other. So he meets my mom. And I remember my mom saying, I'm worried about people with such, I worry about people like that. And I'm like, well, what do you mean, mom? And people with such good souls. Because how long can they survive in this industry with a soul like that? How do you know he's not going to be taken advantage of and what and what and what? And we're like, don't worry, mom. His talent speaks for itself. So there's a whole bunch of people who would protect him and keep that from happening. And she's like, but I can't believe how he's such a nice guy. What? So taken by him until, until you know, until when the album eventually came out, if you look at the thanks section, I don't think there's anyone who actually has the leaf, you know, the thank you details but he thanked three families he thanked the Kagera family the Gikundi family and the Ndiga family you guys uh, the Gikundi fam family being Akina Yvonne's um, the, the Kagera family being the people that lived next to them um, uh, Koi Dina and Jerry um, and then the Ndigas which was my sister myself and my small bro it's very cool the reason why is because he met all our parents and they all loved him. That is crazy. They all loved him. They he like, thanked this the kid. families. Yeah, yeah. He thanked the families. Not, not individuals. He thanked the families for the support. Because our, our parents were getting so excited meeting him because they listened to the music on the radio. Again, you remember media was very... Yes. Everyone was listening to the same thing pretty much. So if he was playing on Nation, he was playing on Capital and he played just before the news and you were sure that your folks had him on the way to work. And they're like, this is that Isa. Undi ule Isa. Hey, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Very good work, very good work. <laughs> and so he said, be like, thank you. And be very nice and, and you know, thank you very much. Have a good night. And I'm like, that's, that's Isa. Like, Anaishi Apachini. Like, celebrity and Halai has never happened. That's crazy. I was a celeb of Halai and I wasn't much of a celeb <laughs> anyway, you know, because of a lover. Um, There's one story you've left out about Isa's contribution in your life, man. I, I, of course, I have to go back <laughs> to, to Mr. ESIU. Okay, let's exactly. That's a thing, <laughs> that's a story that, you know, we've talked a lot, but we've, let's go back now to ESIU. And in this, and, the, and exactly what I said, in this phase of Mr. and Mrs. ESIU, you also got, I mean, in this phase of ESIU, you entered a different role, which was Mr. and Mrs. ESIU. I did. 
Mr. and Mrs. Um, you remember how I told you how um, Olova was there performing at Mr. and Mrs. USIU at my first semester, my first semester in USIU. I linked Olova with USIU and that sort of became a, a working arrangement because Olova showed up for USIU quite a number of times. It was cool when we could perform at the school because the next time we performed at the school was the Freshers Bash. And every time we came and performed, we got such a good response. And USIU was a really valuable crowd to have on your side. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there was a lot of good stuff happening at USIU. A bunch of celebs going to USIU at that point. Um, so two Mr. and Miss USIUs later, in the year 2001, yes. Um, yeah, by this point, of course, Issa is out. You know, he's, he's blowing up. It's so freaking amazing. One day I went to the USA library and I'm like, ah oh, man, I really don't feel like reading. I'll go check out the yearbook, the USA yearbook. And there's a page, there's always a page. The USA yearbook has a lot of pictographs, like a lot of pictures, pages, picture spreads. And one double page spread is always for Mr. and Miss USA. Yeah. So I look at those pictures and this is a strange thing. I had what I can only call a spiritual experience. I can't describe it any other way. My pulse starts racing. I get sweaty, I start feeling faint. It was a very physical feeling. Yeah. And I was like, I think God or universe or whoever, whoever you want to call him or her is talking to me right now. I'm not sure what they're saying, but I feel like I need to do this as well. So whenever anyone would ask me the question leading up to Mr. and Miss USA because I was a soldier of the Lord, why are you perform why, why, why are you doing Mr. and Miss USA, man? I mean, you don't seem to fit the profile. Yeah, you're a dancer and everything, but yeah, you're a short dude, tiny dude, um, and there's tall, handsome dudes who would just win this in a drop of a hat. The guy who'd won before me was a muscular, popular dude who could sing really well. Why are you doing this? I'd say because God told me to. And then I'd be given a look of, <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. But I was like, God told me to do this and I'll do it. So I couldn't read anymore. I was too flustered. I met my friend, Chris Siano, who I mentioned earlier on the way out. And he was like, dude, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm good. Picked up my bag and left. And he was like, yo, as I was leaving, he was like, yo, dude, you know, you need to just take care of yourself. Rest a bit. You look, you look, you don't look fine. And I'm like, no, it's nothing to do with that. I just, I need to go. And I just picked up my bag and I ran to the notice board. And I saw they put up a notice saying, anyone interested in contesting for Mr. and Miss USA, you put your name and your student admission number here and your email. We'll send you an email telling you when the first rehearsal happens. And I did. And I ended up doing the rehearsals. And naturally, when it came to the day itself, um, the, the whole thing was broken down into your, your first walk, you come around and walk, everyone dressed in sort of neutral clothing, the theme was white and blue. And then after that you came round and another, did another round in African attire. And then after that you went into what was called the talent section. So everyone would show off a talent and you had a minute and a half because there were so many contestants. And then after that you went into your evening wear section. And then after they did that, they would shortlist the final five, mm -hmm. boys and girls. And then you went into the Q&A. That was supposed to sort of measure how smart you are. And then from there, they would choose the winner. And this would go over the course of a Thursday evening. And this was the main event of the year. Like, I'm telling you, they even took out ads on the radio saying, Mr. and Miss USIU happening. So there was a lot of non-USIU people showing up for this thing. Yeah. It was the event of the year. As far as campuses go, I think it was the most glamorous campus event, campus-wide, Mr. Yeah. and Miss USIU. It was huge. To the extent that when we got up on that stage for the first time, I was like, these are so many people. I've never seen this number of people from this side. And I had put in so much rehearsal for the walk. I knew my outfit. I was choosing a Shaka Zulu outfit for my traditional, traditional or Africa, whatever you want to call it. And I went to a friend of mine, Sarah Mwangi, and I was like, Sarah, you need to help me with my costume. And she stitched it together and we did 
take after take, I went and left my ID at a shop in Tao that used to sell curios. I bought one curio and said, here's my ID. Let me borrow this one. I'll come and return this one to you. Um, I borrowed a suit. The whole suit I was wearing was borrowed. The shirt, the tie, the suit itself, all borrowed because <laughs> I didn't own a suit that was decent enough. Uh, the only thing I went and bought was shoes. And when I told my mom, yo, I want to contest for Mr. and Mrs. Yes, she was like, are you crazy? What is this, man? You're going to go and lose. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, why do you think I'm going to lose? Like, because Mr. USAE people believe they need to be a certain way. They're outgoing. They're orators. They're taller. <laughs> They're bigger. They're handsome. <laughs> hey, man. Moms are the queens of shades, man. So, anyway, this evening passes by so quickly. So, so quickly. So quick. Like, fuck. Like, in, like all these things happen so quickly. And boy, did I kill every single section. Now, by the time we were going into the talent section, I just went and took all over there, except I was solo. Yeah. And in all over, the thing that I got at least known for was stunting. So a lot of breakdance moves, a lot of suicides, or you jump in the air, do a somersault and land on your back, um, flips in the air, back flips, that thing. But Dude, suicide, you could do those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The worm, those things. Suicide is one people knew me for. Because me and another member called Dan, we were like, yo, I think we can go, we can push this further, yeah? Maybe jump higher, cool. So we do this thing where we jump even higher and turn ourselves and land, boom, flat on the stage. And whenever people would hear the sound of us landing on the stage, they'd be like, ah! and then we'd get up and continue dancing. And because we're high on adrenaline, you're not feeling anything. Yeah. The pain would come way after, <laughs> after, after, after. So put on a performance and it was amazing and so you did the suicide on the message i did the suicide yeah, so i was given my minute and a half my time ran out and the mc was like and that was mugambi integra contestant number 21 i can't remember the name so i just looked at him ignored him and i i i dove and like i jumped into the end landed on my belly and did the worm and then got back on my feet and then jumped in the air and did the suicide Pah! And the MC looked at me and just said laughing, like, okay, let's, see, let's give him his time. <laughs> All right, that was contestant number, and then they finished. And then... Um, and we the went, crowd went crazy, though. Oh, the crowd went crazy, like, look, he's still going, he's still going, he's still going. I did a fusion of a cuke song into a, a hip-hop song, like a real, a real cool hip-hop song that some guy had some KRS one flow. It was really cool. So what I did was went up dressed like a shao dude and did this to cute dances. I had like a waistcoat, a boshori, and a painted tooth and a scarf and just like really shao, like gumboots or some things. And then when the song transitioned into this one, I jumped off the stage, changed quickly in front of every, well, I jumped into the center of the stage, changed quickly and then got back up and started doing these hip hop dances and guys went crazy. And then there was a Q&A session afterwards, which was also went pretty well. And then it came time to announce the winners. And they were like, and now you're Mr. USIU 2001, Mugambi and Tega. And I was like, what? <laughs> All of Olova was there. Olova was there to show me support completely. And we went crazy and we took all these pictures and I won all these prizes. It was freaking amazing. And I remember the other contestants looking at me like, this dude won. <laughs> because I was the most unassuming one. Yes. The, unassuming. I was like seeing them, you know, rehearsal was time for people to wild out and be all, mm, 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 mm. I'm so cool. I've been Mr. Mr. USIU. But I was always the quietest one, you know, and I was always, you know, showing up, doing my thing and leaving. It was only during the last rehearsal where people watched, oh, so what are you guys doing for your talents? I did a little card choreographed thing and they did the suicide thing and soon people are like okay, okay. this is going, going to be a bit crazy then when the q a bit went well boom suddenly i'm mr usiu and all the tall guys who were supposed to <laughs> all look at me like wow it's possible for someone who no one knows to win this thing that's 
pretty cool. Man. What 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 like what did you receive as Mister? So you gift wise? Does the school give you? Uh, yeah, the school gives you a trophy. No, they don't. They you, don't. They don't kill you, off your school fees. It gives you a bit of school fees off of your next quarter. Oh, nice. Um, and then you win a lot of sponsored prizes. So the sponsors were Navy. I got a lot of Navy stuff. Red Bull. And then the best thing is that you get. There's a lot of celebrities there, so they get to see you, and then you can get a few interviews and stuff. That sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And then you can get a few. Like you can get. A, a, the chance to be on ads, that sort of thing. Okay, that's what. Yeah, so yeah. really, but the, most of all, it's Mister Yosayu. It's the title. In school, Mr. Yeah. and Miss Yosayu. It, 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 so no, did it like, constantly put like were you like from no okay no but you are a bit of a celeb because of all over. Yeah, but, but did this put you now on the map? Crazy? No, not really, because you had to go back and now play it up. And you had to be seen where USAE people were, and it was in the clubs. It was at oh, FIFA's. I guess it was at five five, like where people were, and I was. I just show up, but coincidentally, Thursday was Mr. USIU, Sunday was Mr. and Miss University, which was a university-wise, university-wide one. Yeah. And this one was a lot easier. It was a lot less organized. It wasn't as tight. They gave us more time for our talents. The questions were hard, but you were facing off against people from other universities, so suddenly the pressure was a lot less. Plus, I was so sleep deprived i was tired i was like yo let's just do this so red bull being the sponsor they just downed a lot of red bull and then went and continued doing it did the whole thing again and this time they were like now we'll call the finalists from number five to number one because number five i was in there number four i was in there number three i was in there number two still wasn't me and what? everyone was like what <laughs> and in a weekend i wasn't just mr usa i was mr university what in one weekend <laughs> I've never known you were Mr. University. Weekend. I One knew you were Mr. U- <laughs> you were Mr. University. Yeah, true story. I was on page four of the Standard newspaper the next week. The what did your mom week. say? <laughs> oh, my mom. Oh, let's talk about how we reacted with my mom. <laughs> After Mr. and Miss USIU, I went home. I left there pretty early. I went home. I took the trophy. I took the sash. I took. They gave you. You have photos of Mr. Well. Mr. USIU. Of course. Okay. I'll, I'll give them to you. I even have some. I'll show you. Um, they gave you all that, and then I took those things and I put them in front of her door. And I told my boy Bugs, who was helping me out, he was like, I was like, dude, you want to stay awake? That's cool, but please call me. Please call me when these guys wake up. So I went and slept on top of my bed, and I hear my mom exclaiming from upstairs. My dad was working out of the country at this point. That's why he didn't feature much in this story. So I hear her exclaiming, exclaiming, <laughs> saying, what? <laughs> What? And then I go up the stairs and I'm like, "Come on, mom, mom, you're seen. You doubted. <laughs> you doubted my shit. <laughs> now look at you." <laughs> you know, it was only until many weeks later that she said, "Mugambi, it was when I saw your face in the paper that I knew you had won this thing for real." Because I remember giving you such a hard time before you actually went and contested for this thing. <laughs> I gave you such a hard time. <laughs> I honestly thought that the shame of losing was so big that you went to the real Mr. USIU and asked him for his stuff. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> she thought I went to the real Mr. USA and asked him for the sash and the trophy and all that. Dude, you are not just Mr. USIU. You are Mr. Universe. Yes. In 2001. In 2001. Yo. So fast forward to 2002. Isa and I are pretty decent friends. And what happens at the end of your year, you hand over to the next person. So I had a suit down, but then again, I had to borrow things because I didn't have the money, and I needed a pair of shoes to go with this suit of mine. And do you remember how Maxi talked about, yo, this guy has nice shoes. Issa's shoe game was on point. This dude owned. There was a shop at 20th Century called Rock Collection. Uh-huh. And these guys used to bring in some original stuff. Yeah, well, it came from China, yes, but it was some really good quality urban streetwear. So whatever was trending on the source of Vibe magazine, they had it. And so Issa used to shop there, or sometimes they'd even give him stuff for free. And they were stocking Ogopa music there. So Rock Collection was trying to find this space between apparel and pop culture. That's crazy. So Issa lent me a couple of his shoes and the black pair of shoes I wore as I was handing over my title to the next person, uh, a wonderful gentleman called Sur, Sur Sen, God rest his soul, Nigerian dude. Um, the shoes 
I was wearing then. Isas. What Isas shoes? Yo. I wore Isas shoes. It was so. It was man. It's crazy. It's crazy. Hey, dude. This was this was in two two. This was in September of two thousand two. I don't. I would like to know just from you, because mm-hmm. Isa then passed on the next year. I've got footage from Steve Omindia of the funeral. Why you, of course, in that mix? How did that hit you? How did the news? Because now you see, uh, you've talked about the impact he had on your life from a friendship point. Yeah. A lot of people here talk about it from a, apart from Nameless and Big Pin, a lot of the people who've spoken about Isa. It was from a music, music, mm. nini, nini. Mm. You've talked about Issa from a friendship perspective. Yeah, he was just a guy in the neighborhood who we'd hang out with at night. Just, we were just hanging out in the hood. And then he's met all our folks and, you know, he was, he was really, everyone, everyone loved Issa. And mm. we all knew where he lived. Like, everyone knew house number, I can't remember the house number, but I remember the house. Yeah. So... I think everyone can remember, at least anyone who remembered the music scene at that point will remember where they were on the Sunday that Isa passed on. Um, I was still in a lover by this point. Um, we'd formalized a lot of things. Uh, we were now really trying to make a company of all over. <clears throat> First of all, by the way, I've never asked, were you earning money from all over? Did you no. ever get paid? No. 